You may think that it's crazy, some kind of weird joke that a t-shirt could destroy open source software, but unfortunately, this is quite a sad truth. Let me explain. If you're watching my channel, then odds are you love learning, which is perfect because today's video sponsor, Skillshare, has one of the largest learning communities with thousands of online classes, which are crafted with the single goal of helping you become the best version of yourself. And you can do this through a wide range of topics, everything from web development to graphic design, UI, UX design, and even things such as music and productivity. I recently started taking the Productivity Masterclass by Thomas Frank, and it is incredible. The way he's able to sum up all of his points in such a short and concise manner means that I can immediately start taking away the points from his videos and making myself more productive the day that I watch the video, instead of having to go through 10-20 hours of content. Best of all, Skillshare is completely ad-free and coming out with classes all the time, which means that you can stay focused on learning without being distracted by anything else. And you can get it for less than $10 per month if you're on the annual plan. And if you're one of the first 1,000 people to use my link in the description below, you can get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, which is the perfect way to start learning your next skill. So I highly recommend you check out Skillshare. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplify. My job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. The year was 2020, and let's just say it started off pretty rough. I mean, an asteroid could hit Earth and it wouldn't even make the front page of news. Even the new Boston could come back from the dead and start making tutorials again, and it wouldn't even be enough good news to turn around 2020. And then there was a beacon of hope. October was coming around, which meant Hacktoberfest, which is a great opportunity for developers to contribute to open source software, build up the community that helps all developers across the world, empower the world to drive software even further, and on top of that, you can win free swag. I mean, that is a win, 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 win kind of situation. It is amazing a super great opportunity. But unfortunately, developers love swag a little bit too much. And from this story, I learned that if I wanted to take over the world, all I need to do is just offer free swag to developers and tell them to hack whoever I want, and it'll instantly be done. To elaborate a little further on what Hacktoberfest is, it's essentially the entire month of October, and it's dedicated to contributing to open source software. And the way that they do this dedication to open source software is they say that if you contribute five pull requests that get merged into open source software projects, then they're gonna send you a free t-shirt that you can wear to say that, hey, I've contributed to open source software and I have this t-shirt to prove it. So it's a great way for people to contribute to open source software, get their foot in the door, be able to create tons of different pull requests and get into the community when they maybe wouldn't have. And on top of that, they get a free t-shirt for doing so. It's pretty much an amazing system. But unfortunately, people really wanted to game the system because making five good pull requests is not easy, especially because a lot of pull requests require time and effort. You have to go back and forth with the maintainer to ensure that your code is really good, really well tested, really well maintainable, and it's going to further the project that you're working on. And not all projects want tons of new changes and features. So creating a good pull request is very difficult. It takes time, it takes effort and practice. So instead of doing that, what some people decided they'd do is create absolutely terrible junk pull requests. I'm just gonna show you a few examples of ones that I've gotten submitted to my own projects where people just come in here, they add a word to my readme. They put a space on my readme. Maybe they add an enter character, a new line character to the end of a readme file. That's useless. This isn't improving the project in any way and all it is doing is trying to get that person one more pull request on their checkmark box so they can win a free t-shirt. And the problem with this is not necessarily that these pull requests are bad because you can easily just say ignore, close, whatever on the pull request. I mean, just me alone, I don't have any real open source repositories. I have my code repositories for my tutorials, but I don't have any real open source projects. And I still receive 20, 30 pull requests within the first day of October. The first day of Oktoberfest, I had over 20 or 30 pull requests. That's more than I get in many, many months combined together, probably in an entire year. I maybe get like one pull request every couple months because I don't really have projects that are open source. But immediately I started getting flooded with pull requests and 95, 99% of them were all just spam pull requests. I couldn't even look at all of them because there's so many of them coming in, but they're all just adding a word here, changing a word here, and they didn't contribute anything to the actual code. But the problem was, is this was burying actual good pull request. I found one pull request where someone took one of my projects and they added a whole readme file and they put video demonstrations of all the different projects. They put links to the YouTube videos, descriptions of everything, and it was really well done. 
I was like, wow, this is a great pull request. This really improves the project. And I was like, this is amazing. Hacktoberfest is all about this. Taking something that I personally wouldn't have done. I just don't have the time, the willpower to do that kind of stuff. But this person said, hey, I enjoy your work. I'm going to improve upon this by adding a nice readme for everyone to look at. I instantly worked with them. I went back and forth to add a few changes and then was able to merge that in to count for one of their five different pull requests. But the problem is, how am I supposed to find which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones when I'm getting so many of these pull requests in? I know certain people that are very prominent in the open source community that run lots of open source projects, they're getting hundreds of these pull requests an hour. I mean, that is mind boggling. Even if your full time job was to look at these pull requests and delete the spam ones, you wouldn't even be able to keep up with these number of pull requests coming in. This normally wouldn't be a problem because you could just delete all of these pull requests, but in doing so, you're also deleting all of the good pull requests all of the people that are really wanting to actually help and contribute and they put hours and hours of their own time maybe it's the first time they ever contributed to open source and they put so much effort into this pull request just to have it be closed because the maintainer didn't have time to look at it i mean think about that if you're that person that poured in tens of hours of your work into open source for the first time and you're like wow this was really fun this is really cool and then boom instantly closed because the person couldn't look at it you would feel so defeated you wouldn't want to contribute to open source anymore and probably, I guarantee a lot of people that are in that situation say, screw it, it's not worth my time. I just poured out my soul and effort into this pull request. It's awesome, it's amazing, and they didn't even look at it. Why would I contribute again? This is the problem with these people creating these spam pull requests, is that you're overshadowing all the people that are putting actual true effort into doing this. Generally, I think of Hacktoberfest as an amazing thing because it gets new people into open source software and just in general increases the contribution to open source software and moves the entire community forward as a group. But this year, I think it's a little bit different. There were so many spam pull requests which were promoted by other people kind of showing how to create these spam pull requests to game the system, and that encouraged a lot of people to do this. There's been a large influx in spam pull requests that you don't normally get in other years, and I think this is going to actually have a negative effect on this. Not only is it going to cause people to not want to contribute, as I mentioned earlier, but also on the maintainers of these projects. They're doing it in their spare time, and now they're having to sacrifice spending time with their family, their kids, their friends, spending time on their health and all of this, just so that they can go through and close these spam pull requests. And that's going to wear them down, and it's going to say, you know what, screw this, I'm not going to maintain this project anymore. So good projects that have great maintainers are going to lose their willpower and desire to maintain those projects because it's so much effort. And they have to sacrifice so many things in their lives just to deal with these spam pull requests. Luckily, the organizers of Hacktoberfest also saw all of the same problems that I did, and they created a statement on the very first day of Hacktoberfest. Within 24 hours of opening up, they created a statement essentially helping out maintainers to mark these spam pull requests as invalid to essentially prevent people from gaming the system. And if this pull request is marked as invalid, it won't actually count towards the person's Hacktoberfest 5 pull request limit. This alone really helped to curb some of the spam because now it's not as easy to get past the spam check because people can easily mark you as spamming the system and essentially get you banned from winning the t-shirt. So this helped prevent a lot of the spam and also the person that helped promote the spamming, whether it was accidental or not, helped by taking down their content that was you know, showing people how to spam the system and that also reduced the spam because new people weren't being exposed to easy ways to game the system. And this drastically helped reduce the amount of pull requests that were coming in that were spam. Because I know for me, for example, I received so many pull requests in the very first day. But then after this announcement was made, the next 10 days following, I received the same number of pull requests as I did in the first 24 hours of Hacktoberfest. Which means that most of these newer pull requests are hopefully good, true pull requests of people that are actually trying to make good changes to the code instead of just spammy, annoying bot-related ones. Now, I know this has probably been a bit ranty and a bit me complaining about things, but I just wanted to get the word out there to help people understand the effect that this has on open source as a whole, the maintainers, as well as other contributors. So if you are one of those people that followed the advice of creating these more spammy pull requests that don't actually contribute to the code meaningfully, I recommend that you take these pull requests down, close them, do whatever you need to do to get rid of them, That'll take the burden off of the maintainer, which makes their life easier, which helps the open source community as a whole. It also means that they have more time to look at pull requests where people are putting actual time and effort into to create some meaningful change to the actual product or library they're working on. So even if you did this, don't feel bad about it yourself because it's really easy. You're like, oh, this is a great way to win a free t-shirt. You may not actually think through how this could affect other people. So it's 100% okay if you did this. I'm not blaming you in any way. 
But I do recommend just take them down, close these pull requests. You know, they're not actually helping anybody because they're just spam pull requests and you're purely doing it for a t-shirt. But in doing so, you're also hurting other people, contributors, maintainers, and the whole open source community. And that's really all I have to say about this situation. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out my other discussion-based videos. I'll link them over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.